You know what time it is. It's couch time with Sonia. Let's, Let's go. go. Hello and welcome. I am Sonia Lowe, the Embrace Coach, and I am blessed to be on the couch with my co-host and sister, Delia Cortez. Couch Time is a family space to have real conversations. To know our mission and keep up with what we're doing, visit us at CouchTimeWithSonia.com. This is our final segment on self-care, and we want to thank you to all our viewers who've been joining in on our online social media discussions. It has been great. And we want you to know that last week, we talked about taking care of you, especially your body, loving you enough to exercise and eat well. Our Couch Time began a 45-day transformation challenge. And boy, Mr. Logan at Loganitis Training is working us out. We invite you to come join us. The Fit Fam is in full effect. We're going to be summertime fine. We are. <laughs> You know, with that being said, a healthy body lends to a lot of more ability, stamina, and be able to just be able to accomplish more, to do more. So in this last segment, we're really going to go over my favorite topic, and that's serving. So what comes to mind immediately when I say the word serve? Do you think of your favorite waiter, waitress serving food to you at your favorite restaurant? Or perhaps a volleyball player when they serve that ball? Mm. Or maybe mm -hmm. it's men and women who serve in the armed forces. While these all certainly are ways to serve, we want to look at it from a different perspective. And that's the self-care perspective and how serving, giving back to others, means giving back to you. Mm, that's awesome. So join us on the couch. You know how we do it. Get comfortable, grab your favorite drink. We have some good information for you and some great guests. We'll be right back. If you would like to be a guest or advertise your business on Couch Time with Sonia, I would love to hear from you. Email me, visit couchtimewithsonia.com. By now, I am quite sure that you have realized that you cannot fully take care of others until you take care of you. And I hope you're taking care of yourself first. However, did you realize that serving others is a part of self-care? Yes, selflessness as opposed to selfishness. I love that. <laughs> Let's put a pin right there. I want you to remember those two words. We're going to come back, back to them. But think about this. When you do good for others, the recipients of your kindness aren't the only ones reaping the benefits. You know, Huffington Post stated, there are a ton of perks in it for you. This year's International Day of Happiness was actually on March the 20th. And to honor the cheery holiday, we've brought you 10 ways helping others can put a smile on your face. <laughs> Perhaps you'll feel inspired to go out and lend a helping hand to someone else. Helping others actually, you know, it makes you feel great. Do you believe that? Giving back has an effect on your body. Studies show that when people donated to charity, hmm. the mesolimbic system, you know, that part of the brain that's responsible for the feelings of reward, those are triggered. The brain also releases a feel-good chemical and spurs you to perform more kinds of actus, something psychologists call a helper's high. See, that's a high I don't mind having. Right? <laughs> I'll have it all day long. <laughs> Giving can give you a self-esteem boost. Um, if you've heard it enough, have you been listening to your inner critic? Because remember, we got rid of that. Consider donating some of your time to a cause that you're passionate about. People who volunteer have been found to have a higher self-esteem and overall well-being, and I do believe that. Experts will explain that the feeling of social connectedness increases, and so does your self-esteem. The benefits of volunteering also depends on your consistency. So the more you regularly volunteer, the more confidence that you'll be able to cultivate. Does that sound kind of familiar? I'm, sorry, so I, I'm thinking this is kind of like our workout mm -hmm. where we have to consistently work out to get stronger. That makes us feel good. But in this case, 
We want you to serve. That makes you stronger, makes you better, makes you feel better. Awesome. And consistency is the key. Yes. You know, the other is friendships, building good and strong friendships like yours and mine. Yes. You know, that's a force. Be a good force in someone's life and build a lasting bond. I hope that you and I have built some bonds just on this couch. Oh, very much so. Lasting ones. Yes. You know, sharing those good vibes and really improving friendships, th that's where we want to go. That's what we try to do on a daily basis. Yes. You know, according to the National Institute of Health, both parties contribute to maintaining a mutually beneficial dynamic, like we do right here every day. Well, it's kind of cool because we have a dynamic, but it's all because, yes, we are serving, even right here on the couch. Mm -hmm. And so that dyna dynamic, we hope, portrays to our viewers as well. Yes. So you know that half full type person, mm -hmm. the person that rose-colored glasses? Mm -hmm. That's someone who has a positive impact on someone. It's someone that can change your own outlook and your attitude. Experts say that performing acts of kindness boosts your mood and ultimately makes you more optimistic and positive. Wow. It seems like serving really does affect everything about us. For sure. You know, helping others actually makes you feel like you can take on the world, that you can do anything, and it's so rewarding. Helping someone out can leave you feeling rewarded and fulfilled. People who participate in volunteer work, I can honestly say they're totally different and they feel more empowered. You know, we have some guests today and we're going to hear more about how that serving makes them feel. I know how I do, but I really want to hear from the perspective of others. So be sure if you're watching, go online, let us know what you think. Helping others will make you feel like you can take on the world. <laughs> like a champion. Yes. And helping someone else truly, truly does give you that feeling of reward and fulfillment. People who participate in volunteer work feel more empowered than those who do not. And according to a survey by the United Health Group, 96% of people who volunteered over the last 12 months said that volunteering enriches their sense of purpose. You know, I can believe that. That's a huge statistic. Right. 96%. So that lets you know that you need to get out and serve someone. You know, you'll feel a sense of belonging, whether in a large group of people or in a small setting like this or, you know, at a volunteer opportunity. It is okay to exchange those words of advice, mm -hmm. spend that time hanging out with one another. Helping people, it, it creates that sense of community, that face-to-face hmm. -face activities like volunteering or dropping in at a at a center that could use your help, it helps redu reduce that loneliness and isolation that we see. Oh, we have to really say that right now in this day and time, there's so much loneliness and people isolate themselves. What a great way to kind of segue out of that is, you know, kind of take the focus off of them is to get up and, and serve someone. Pretty awesome. You know, giving will also help you to find your inner peace. If you have a lot that's, you know, weigh weighing you down and giving back could truly help you kind of clear your head. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a study that was done by the United Health Group. 78% of people who volunteered over a 12-month period said that they, they just felt better and it lowered their stress levels. Don't you believe that right now we need all the reducing stress we can get? Yes, with all the busy schedules, we definitely do. Man, it's just stress is so major in our society today. And so also, you know what, participate in that volunteer work. When you participate, you honestly feel better. It will make you feel thankful as well. Yes. So, you know, helping others gives you the perspective, per, it gives the perspective of your own situation. Mm -hmm. It teaches you to be appreciative of what you have. You know, it's not taking things for granted. You know, volunteering as a way to promote a deeper sense of gratitude as we recognize more and more of what already is a blessing or a gift in your life. Kind of when you're helping someone else and kind of thinking about the storms that happen. Man, during Harvey, just thinking about all of the service, the community. You didn't have time to think about what you were really walking through. You were so busy out serving others and trying to help. It was just, it was amazing. There was the community, but there was also that I'm focusing on someone else. You know, during that time, 
we really saw serving at its best point. We saw people pulling up in boats to homes mm -hmm. to help, and they didn't care what color you were, what your financial status was, where you went to school, where you didn't go to school. All you saw was serving in real sense of community. Yes. At that moment, I was so proud of the city that I live in. I agree. And if you are out helping with Harvey, we want to thank you as well for your service. You know, it also gives us that sense of renewal. Sometimes just serving others just makes me feel renewed and refreshed. And um, also on top of that, it gives you that opportunity to kind of think through tough experiences. You might be going through something really tough. You may be having that case of the blues. Mm -hmm. You know, the activism cure, that's a great word. The activism cure is a great way to get back to feeling like yourself. Volunteer work improves how you feel. It improves your social and psychological resources, which are known to counter negative moods. You know that negative thinking? Yes, negative Nellie again. Exactly she keeps right. coming up. She pops up constantly, right? Yes. <laughs> Finally, helping others will spur others to pay it forward, and it keeps the cycle of happiness going. You know, you see this at those restaurants when you pull up and they mm. say, the person in front of you is already taking care of it. Yes. What does it do? It makes you want to do the same for right. the person behind you. Yes. So you're get, just keeping that cycle going. So true. Kindness is contagious. When we see someone else help another person, it gives us a good feeling. We want to have that feeling. So in turn, we go out and do something really nice for someone else. We hope that this just totally encourages you to truly just get out and serve, serve, serve. We've given these points and we hope these points you put to use. Someone truly needs you today. Well, you know how we do this. Take a little break, refill your cup, and we'll be right back. And then there was life. Born to color outside the lines. Born for such a time as this. You showed up on the planet to produce a dream. You, yes you, were born with purpose, with words. Friends, imagine that your dreams can become your reality by the words you speak. It all starts today. It starts with you. Creation, formation, transformation, all begin with change. The battle is in your mind, but your voice is your weapon. Speak life, believe, prosperity, creative, daring. The best way to predict your future is to create it. Your future is unwritten. Let's begin writing today. Your words create your world. back. Thanks for being with us. I now have the pleasure of introducing our first guest today. This is Jason Ray Felton. Now, isn't he some relation to you? You know, this is my son-in-law, my only son-in-law. So yes, I do love him dearly. Aww. Well, we want to tell you and give you an honor as well, because I hear that you are master Jason Felton. Uh, that is my title. Yes, ma'am. I've been doing karate for 23 years, and so I've obtain the rank of fourth degree black belt and master is the title that comes along with that so well thanks for being on the set with us today. Kidding me? thank you for having me this is <laughs> awesome so karate is actually how i met jason he was my two sons he, this was their sensei oh this is wow my favorite story that is hands so down favorite awesome. story <laughs> yeah i don't know that they will get into it maybe i'll tell you offset but <laughs> gotcha this is um jason became family through teaching the boys and then i introduced him to crystal so. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Oh, it, like I said, it was amazing. <laughs> Since a son-in-law will forever go down in infamy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here, Jason. No, I'm But excited. I did want to, you know, let's get started. I, I want people to get to know you okay. a little bit. So having worked out at your facility and, and having been there a few times, I know what you offer, but our audience and Sonia, they don't know. So tell me about the dojo. Um, dojo is a Japanese term for place of instruction or school, so a lot of people just reference it as a gym. Um, I like to think of it as a, uh, 
what's my alliteration? A fully functional family fitness facility. Mm. So uh, how many Fs is that? Fully functional family fitness facility. Five Fs. Five Fs. Got it. Okay. Uh, we do a little bit of everything. We got something for absolutely everybody. We have Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which uh, if you're not familiar with any of the martial arts, it's phenomenal for self-defense. It's a lot of the ground fighting and stuff. It's one of the things that I highly recommend for you know women to take. Um, but BJJ is all on the ground. We do Muay Thai kickboxing where I instruct that. It's punches, kicks, knees, and elbows. We're, for the kids, we teach karate, boxing, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And then we also have our own little fitness section with Coach Chad, our fitness coach, and uh, doing fitness boot camps out back. So, and then we have our MMA program as well. So we have a wow. lot of wheels turning at once. Yes, you do. Now, I've had both the pleasure and kind of fear of seeing you fight. So you, I've watched you in, in the ring doing MMA and Muay Thai, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Why those? Why did you pick those? Um, I just really, really enjoy them. MMA, because it was like with the onset success of the UFC and how big it was getting, it became such a staple. And the MMA scene in Houston is crazy. It's one of the most competitive scenes that you'll find. Uh, wow. Starting with Lone Star Beatdown, which I had the chance to fight on as an amateur, and then it turned into Legacy Fighting Championship, and now it's Legacy Fighting Alliance, one of the main feeder organizations for the UFC. And then Muay Thai, just because I love the stand-up aspect of it. I l less ground, more the stand-up aspect of it. So I'll have to say, I don't want to mess with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, harmless. <laughs> harmless unless you need to use it, right? I well, know that's right. And fortunately, through the martial arts training and all the stuff that we do, 23 years of doing it, I've never once had to use it. Wow. That's a good thing. That is a good thing. It's like people ask about it like, oh, I don't want any of the kids to ever have to. Exactly. Stuff. But I'd rather them be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. That's mm. good. That's good. Can you say that again? I would rather my kids, uh, I, this isn't me, this is a Japanese proverb I read, so I can't claim this, although I'd like to. Um, I would rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Mm. That's awesome. I, yes, I love that. And I so hope you caught that. There's also a, um, you, there's a particular location of the gym. Yes, ma'am. And there's a story behind that. So can you kind of tell us why that location? Um, so the owner of the gym, his name is Michael White, um, a very successful businessman in Houston. He owns a company called Real Energy Solutions, along with others. And then I got introduced to him by teaching his son. And it was funny because when he pulled up the first day, he had an awesome car, and I didn't know what it was. And it had a Trident on the front of it. And after a couple weeks of training, I was like, I what kind of car is that? I've never seen it. He's like, oh, that's a Maserati. I was like, I don't make enough money to spell Maserati, <laughs> much less know what one is. <laughs> so highly successful. And the gym, this was our brainchild from about seven years ago. We got to talking about, well, what would you do if you ever had your own gym? And mm. so he called me one day and said, hey, it's time. I'm like, no, it's 3.30. What does that have to mean? You know, no, it's time to open the gym we've always talked about. Wow. And uh, he put it over on the east side of Houston on Wood Forest Boulevard. Um, and he put it there because that's the area he grew up in. And it's not a great area. Uh, he graduated from North Shore High School, um, but he wanted to put it there as a beacon for the community, for the kids yeah. to have somewhere to come to, and not just come to, but a safe place where they could come to, a place where they could grow, not only physically, but where they mm -hmm. could you know, grow as human beings and kids and have some guidance and something that's really lacking these days. Man, that's pretty awesome. I, what I hear is purpose. He knew his purpose and he purposed that gym to be in a particular spot to serve his community. Right in line with what we're talking about? Serving, Yes. Right? You know, it's, it's a great way for you, for Mike, to give back to the community that you live mm -hmm. in, you know, to, for the people that are there. It's a good way for them to work on their bodies, their self-care, mm -hmm. which again, is goes back to the three, the last three weeks that we've been talking about, or two weeks and then today, taking care of oneself and that includes yes. your body right and it's awesome you like you see changes <coughs> in families that train together because one like we have a family and all of them are involved in it. there's five of them and they're all involved in all sorts of different things but it's crazy watching the transformation that something like that can do to a family not just when it's one person That's or right. one kid does it and then the parents like you know what i want to do this so we can share this together and you just see an entire dynamic change within the family not just the kid so beyond that self-care, there's a way that RISE gives back to the community. Mm -hmm. And that, that's tied to your anti-bullying campaign, correct? Right. Tell me about so, that. So um, we do try to do a lot of stuff. Like our first Halloween, Mike bought 
probably $2,000 worth of candy, and we rented a hydraulic lift, and we did a candy drop in the parking lot, opened up to the community, and bring everybody together. Uh, we're mm -hmm. very active and very involved within Galena Park ISD, and you know, I'd love to expand beyond Galena Park ISD, but that's, that's our home school district right now. Mm -hmm. So um, there's always Red Ribbon Week, and Red Ribbon Week is the anti-drug and awareness but they also have the anti-bullying day. It always tends to be right in the middle of Red Ribbon Week. And so we go out into the schools, uh, primarily elementary schools, and we offer dynamic presentation for the kids to where we teach them how to recognize what bullying is because mm -hmm. it's, it's terrible. Bullying has always been around, but it's, an, yeah. it takes on, it's a much nastier thing these days. Yeah. Whereas like, you know, when I was growing up, okay, you had to worry about he hit me or they're laughing at me making fun of me. Now it's less physical and it's definitely much more on the mental yes, and the psychological end with the introduction of social media and cyberbullying and stuff like that. Like when I talk to kids, I'll ask first graders, okay, who has Facebook? A couple of them will raise their hand, which that's scary enough. It's like, okay, who has Instagram? A few more raise their hands. I'm like, Twitter? A couple of them, and then I say, Snapchat. Yes. Every single kid's hand goes up. Yes. And the fact that, you know, people can employ these different social media platforms to intimidate and bully other kids yeah. so readily is very, very scary. So teaching them to recognize this stuff is increasingly important. Well, what's so awesome is that you, you've just made a real statement. Snapchat is mainly where our children are. It's, mm -hmm. it's the number one for the young age group. Right. And like I told them, I was like, who has Facebook? And the kid goes, that's for old people. I was right. like, seriously? Yes. You know, we've yes. heard that before. And if you don't know out there, you know, Snapchat is where your kids are. So yes. make sure you know it well enough to know what they're doing. So Jason, you know, I asked the question about the anti-bullying and, mm -hmm. and you told us that piece, but there, there's a piece beyond that in that you take some of these students yeah. under your wing. Um, for the longest time, I was petrified of the middle school, high school demographic mainly because I was in middle school at one point, and if I had to deal with me, I'd punch me in the throat. <laughs> I, I know how I was. Uh, but counselors reached out to us, and uh, we went in, and we've had the pleasure of working with a couple of the different middle schools in the area. And they bring us in to work with their at-risk kids. And when I say work with their at-risk kids, um, they have things called chat and chew, where it's kids that are having problems or have been pulled out, like there's a potential issue or this could evolve into something worse. And they spend time with the counselors talking about goal setting and just w direction their lives are going so forth and so on. And they bring us in to talk with them and give them our experience, what we do and things that, you know, they could do to potentially have a better outcome in the direction they're headed. And we've had quite a few kids, primarily from that middle school demographic that have come in and we've taken them under our wings and turned it less from an instructional thing and more into a mentorship program to where mm -hmm. we, you know, if they have questions with their grade, they can come in and we'll tutor them. Mm -hmm. If they're having an issue at home, they can come talk to us. Like, it's a humbling experience having a 16-year-old kid, it's not middle school, but having a 16-year-old kid knock on your door and say, hey, hey coach, can I talk to you for a minute? Mm -hmm. And literally almost break down in tears and open up about something that's going on in his life. Exactly. Like, you know, my brother's in jail, my dad's always gone. This is where I'm feeling some temptation. This is what my friends are like. I don't know how to navigate this. Can yeah. you can you help me? Like, what would you recommend? It's a very humbling and eye-opening experience to see a kid that's going through like that. I thank you for what you and your gym are doing um, because it's so needed, as we know. I mean, gosh, um, right now an outlet is needed for our young yes, our young kids, so. and um, I thank you and for a constructive offering outlet. it. A yes. Constructive outlet. Yes, and also knowing that you're allowing them to open up in a safe environment which is big because if you're listening and you're watching, I want you to know that if you have an at-risk child or you know that you're having issues, I want you to make sure you reach out because in a safe environment is where your baby needs to open up and be able to share what's on their heart. It may not be that they do it at home, but it may need, mean that they need an outlet, a safe place. So I, I thank you, Jason, for that. No, it's the least we could do. Well, I, I definitely want to ask, I mean, you've elaborated on your programs and the importance of your programs and what you do. Would you share, really, what does serving mean to you? How does it make you feel? I don't, I don't see life being really worth it if you're not serving. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Like, I'm here. I'm a finite being. Like, all of us, we're going to be here and we're going to be gone in the blink of an eye. But the lives that we touch while we're here, like, I can't change the world, but I can change the world of the kids that are around me. That's it. Touching my heart with that. <laughs> um, that's pretty beautiful. It's like, you know, we can't do everything, but we mm-hmm. can do something. Right. And I may not change the world as a whole, but a kid I'm involved with, he might. Yes. yes. And then I can, I, that'll mm-hmm. be a notch on my belt. So awesome. That 16 year old, I bet, really values the time you spent with him. And that's not mm-hmm. the whole world, but it's, it's his, his world. world. And, and <laughs> you're helping impact that in a very positive way. That's what we're trying to do with everybody we run into. We, there are successes and failures for sure, but the ones that the success stories are worth it. Yes, I can t- definitely tell just by looking in your eyes um, the passion that you have for what you do, and knowing knowing your mother-in-law. I guess I have to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you said mother-in-law. Jason refers to me as Madre. Ah, Madre. I love that that that's become his name for me. He'll mm-hmm. text me or he'll message me and it's like madre and then it, it's <laughs> followed by his statement or, or question like madre and then followed by like a redneck text <laughs> <laughs> i love it you know it, it has been really fun having you here and listening about you know your your service to the community all that you're doing all that mike is really dedicated to yeah. helping and getting better but i'm going to use a little you know, we're going to use a little bit more of your experience. As we we've talked about, we've had a three-part series, mm-hmm. and it was about self-care, mm-hmm. you know, positive self-esteem, a lot of the things that you're talking about. But there's going to be something more to that, a little bit about the physical self. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, we we recently started a 45-day challenge. And you I've know heard. This. <laughs> I'm you know, so excited. We can hardly move today. We're so sore. <laughs> but it's good. Well, we definitely do know that in today's time, it's it's much more, yes, we want to eat right. Yes, we want to take care of our body. But we also need to know how to take care of ourselves if and which we pray that it's never a case, but just in case we're ever in any type of situation. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And I heard that you actually teach that mm-hmm. or share that. Yeah, we do. Um, any of the arts that we teach, like there's a self-defense component to it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, Muay Thai, punches, kicks, knees, and elbows. Super awesome for self-defense. Awesome. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, one of the best forms of self-defense out there. So. Well, I think, you know what? I think we all need to hear and see a little bit about this. This is his area of expertise. And so we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, he has something not only to share with us, but to share with you. So grab your kids, pull them around, because it's not just for you, the adults. The kids need to see this as well. We'll be right back. CEO Jalea Davis is making history by becoming the youngest African-American female to own a television station in the nation. Along with her colleague, President Crystal Holmes, these women are becoming a part of the 1.3% African-American television station ownership. Get ready for Iconic Television, an all-new channel coming to your TV on KVVV Channel 15.10, covering Houston's local inspiration, entertainment, health, wellness, fitness, family, visual artists, comedians, and more. Streaming 24-7 on IconicTelevision.com. Be sure to stay tuned for the latest and greatest on Iconic Television, where everyone can be iconic. Welcome back. As we were discussing prior to the break, we have Master Jason here with us, and he's going to show you and us some self-defense mechanisms that we definitely know not only are needed for you as adults, we hope you grabbed your children, brought them around the TV, because we want them to be able to see it as well. So you know what, Jason? Take it away, show us. Uh, So first and foremost, when it comes to self-defense, more than anything, uh, it's not, it's how you carry yourself. Uh, Number one, we wanna make sure that we're always hyper aware of what's around us. And for, I'm, I'm guilty of it just as much as the next person. I'm walking to my car, and I'm on my phone like this, and I'm absolutely not paying attention to anything around me. That's probably when like, you're ripe for the picking at that point. Uh, number two, make sure you know where you're parking, you know, especially if you're with your kids. Um, well-lit areas, like if you park at one place and it's daytime outside, or when you come out, is it gonna be night? Is there well lit? Number, carry yourself like you know what you're doing. Somebody mm-hmm. that walks tall with their shoulders back and their chin up, much less likely to be victimized by any of this stuff because 
people like that prey on the weak. And mm -hmm. if you carry yourself as a confident individual, you're less likely to be. Now, God forbid something should happen. There's always circumstances where we might actually have to defend ourselves. Uh, first and foremost, your voice is your most powerful weapon of self-defense. Um, mm. And we want to make sure that you say the right thing. So you want to keep your hands open, always out in front. The moment you close your fist, that's just inviting an altercation. But this is allowing me to provide some space and distance, but still if I have to. Um, and you want to use your voice. So things that you don't, you want to avoid saying are things like help because people don't want to get involved in things. Right. Um, and we see it time and time again. People try to avoid the conflict. Like, that's not my problem. Um, so things you want to say are things that are going to draw people's attention because it puts their personal safety at risk. Mm -hmm. So you scream fire. So if you scream fire, everybody immediately looks like, wait, where is the fire at? Because I'm in danger now. And so that attracts more attention, which is increasingly important because That's at that point, good some, good, uh, some good Samaritans or, you know, once attention gets drawn, a person is less likely to continue because they're at higher risk. Right. Um, going forward, like I said, God forbid something should ever happen. I've, d I've done this 23 years and I've never had to use self-defense to protect myself or my family. And I'm very grateful for that. Uh, but sometimes a situation might arise. We're going to look at a couple of different positions. Uh, we'll look at a bear hug at the end. Um, it's a very common restraint type of move. We're trying to pick somebody up and carry them off and how to mitigate that damage. And then another one is just going to be a frontal attack, um, whether it be a choke from the front, a shoulder grab, or something like that. Uh, we'll look at that one first. And so we'll, let's say, for example, we're here and somebody comes up and they get the jump on you. You know, you're not able to maintain that distance and create space and get away. And they come out, whether they grab here or whether they go for a frontal choke or whatever the case may be. Your hands are up and you want to keep your elbows in. And what you're going to do is you're going to bring your hands up and you're going to go out against my forearms. And essentially, you're pushing my arms out. And you're wanting to, most importantly, just to break the grip. Always break the grip. If somebody grabs your wrist, don't do anything before you break the grip. Always get the hands off of me. So we're here hands come up and they come out and you do it like this like McDonald's type motion like it's exaggerated and very heavy so it comes up out and it's open and now self-defense it gets convoluted with some of the stuff we see like the West Virginia ninja like you know kung fu kicking and karate <laughs> chopping and these very long and elaborate self-defense techniques when it comes to self-defense simple is as good as it gets so you want to be very simple with it so this is called an ear box what you're gonna do is you're gonna cup your hands and as you break the grip up, you're going to take both hands cupped and slam them onto my ears at the same time. It's a very disorienting strike, and it will provide that time that you need to get away. Because if it comes down to getting away or staying engaged, get away. There's Got no it. point in staying engaged. So from here, come in here, hands come out. There you go. And you really want to pop it. It's not a hit, stay and bring it back. Like, pop it. Give it a little pop. I'm used, I'm used to it. The kids do it to me all the I time. I don't want to hurt him. I'm it's strong. <laughs> She's been working out for two days. <laughs> and, and, uh, and they, now, pop like you're clapping your hands. Ready? Oh, okay. And go. Boom. Yeah, that was good. Sorry. Yeah, now, don't be. Now, now, imagine if you do, now, imagine if you do that hard. Like, right. you just barely did it in this little, ooh. Right. But you do it, you do it strong. Another great one, um, anything that's on the throat is awesome. Um, it's a very sensitive region right here. Uh, yeah. Soft tissue areas, eyes, throat, those are all great spots. Yeah. Karate chop right to awesome. the Awesome. Now, um, did you hear that? I want you to make sure that you're taking notes because, yes, it was, oh my gosh, how amazing that I broke free. But that this disorienting, that is great information. And ladies, I want you to make sure, especially during those holidays when you're out shopping, make sure that you're taking this into consideration. Keep going, Jason. Yeah. Um, and then another one is very common restraint or abduction type of grab is going to be from a bear hug. Uh, you see it a lot of times. People come up from the back and they'll wrap around and they'll lift up. Now, this is terrible because it's pinning your arms down. And so first things first, we've got to get the arms free. So somebody comes up behind and they get the drop on you and they grab and they're trying to muscle you around the first thing you've got to do is you've got to drop your base or you have to create a base first mm. i know i've done it with my kid who is on here and him being on here you would never know it but like if he's throwing a fit and he decides to drop it it's hard to get him anywhere right so all you do is you spread your legs a little bit and you drop your base and you create a really strong platform there you go and as you do that especially me being a taller person as your base drops, if I'm trying to hang on to you, it pulls my posture forward. Ah, okay. So we're here, and as she 
You see, she dropped and I had to drop with her because I'm trying to maintain control. And as she does it, she's gonna bring her elbows up just a little bit to free up. And now she's gonna take this leg and she's gonna step all the way around behind, just like so. And you see how she's kind of basing her yes, leg right I behind do. mine? And because of that step, her arms are free. She's gonna grab the back of both of my legs. And at this point, she's gonna lift as she postures up. <sighs> Hold on. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> right, and we'll go slow. So she lifts, postures up, ah. and it'll go now. Wow, way to and go, <laughs> dear. And now, and now, we'll, now we'll do it a little bit faster so that you can see more of a real reaction versus. That was awesome. That was awesome. And this you know, self defense is addicting. It's really fun to do. Like, so we come up behind. Boom, she drops up, back. Oh, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. You see, my co-host is strong. Don't you mess with her. Are you okay, no, Jason? Oh, oh, fine. Yeah. Perfectly okay. Yes. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I think those are some Man, really good Man, that was moves. awesome. I want you to know I am using these moves, and I sure hope that you're doing the same thing. Make sure that you practice these particular moves. Rewind if you have to on the replay whenever you watch it again and make sure you know how to do these particular moves. But we thank you so much, Jason. Oh, thank you for having me. Master Jason, having him on set has been amazing today. And I have to even give a shout out to my co-host. Way to go, Delia Cortez. It was awesome today. We have had an amazing and fun-filled day today. I wanna thank you so much, Master Jason. Thank, thank you. This is awesome information that you've taught us. We hope that you have paid attention and that you continue to practice these moves as well because I know Delia and I will. Also, Rise NNA will be offering a free self-defense class exclusive for our Couch Time with Sonya viewers. Go to couchtimewithsonya.com to sign up. And so that any school that wants you to actually come in and do an anti-bullying program or for individuals who want to be a part of your self-defense or any other of your programs, please let them know how they can get in touch uh, with you. So we're rising in AM Fitness. We're on Wood Forest Boulevard on the east side, um, I-10, Normandy, and Uvalde area. Uh, you can reach us at 832-516-8644, or you can hit us up on our website at www.teamrisemma.com. Awesome. And you know what? We're going to go to break because we're going to continue practicing. Hope you're doing the same. We'll be right back. If you would like to submit questions or topics for the show, send us an email. Visit couchtimewithsonya.com. We are back. We have the pleasure of welcoming back Logan from Loganitis Training. Thank you Welcome back, Logan. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor. We are so excited. Remember, you came back so quick. <laughs> Last time he was here, he was actually talking about our body health and taking care of ourselves and spending time with making sure the benefits of our body are wonderful. Yeah. But today, we're talking about something totally different, and it's passionate to his heart, and it's talking about service. Yeah. You know, um, Logan, tell us and our viewers, really, what is the definition of service to you? Service to me is being able to help somebody um, that really can't, you know, get to their dreams by themselves. Being able to get to a goal, you know, helping them with a helping hand to be able to achieve something that, you know, um, is a blessing to them as well. That's awesome. Well, I know you're helping us reach one of our <laughs> goals, and that's, you know, getting fit and healthy. So thank you for that. Yeah, thank yes. you as well. Thank you for working hard. You know, so tell me a little bit about how, how you serve. Um, so the, one of the ways I serve is um, through the community. It's called a YES program, so it's helping the youth. Um, in the uh, risk uh, parts of the city and I uh, you know just get with them and mentor them and uh, see what their goals are and really get to know them as a person and show them that you know there is someone that cares because usually they don't have a parent yeah. at home it's usually just a single mom um, family so I get to be that that older brother or that father figure for them you know and show them that you know there is somebody that cares that will stand with you Beautiful. You know, sadly, we know that statistically there's so many uh, men, young men, yes. that are missing <laughs> that father figure, that big brother. So great job. I, I just love that you're doing that, and you can tell that you're truly passionate about doing it. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about, like, kind of like she asked early, why? Why? Well, because um, growing up, I was in the same, you know, setting growing up as well, and I just uh, didn't learn how to read, write, spell, do math until I was 21. 
And I just want to make sure, you know, that if I can, you know, pass it forward, as they say, and uh, help someone else out so they don't have to go through the same struggles, you know, that's what, you know, it's all about to me. And, you know, my legacy is being able to help as many people, you know, not have to go through the same trials and be able to help them to achieve their dreams a little bit easier. Wow. Logan, I, I just commend you. L Delia, he just talked about all of our segments. Yes. You know, you know legacy. If I, had a, if I had a hat, I would take it off and tip it. <laughs> <myself. laughs> you're, you're a representation of our past um, series that we've been talking about, legacy, and then even now in self-care. Um, just thank you for all that you do. It's yeah. an honor. Going back to our previous segments, I love that what you're doing today, you're changing the legacy you will leave for your future family. Yes. So your future family will not face the battle of not reading, not writing, not doing math till they're 21 because you're changing that. Yeah. So. Your story matters. And you, our viewers, I want you to know you're going to get to hear Logan's story, and it is life-changing. It is truly life-changing. But I also know that Logan has an amazing event coming up, and it is community-wide, yeah. and you can participate. So, Logan, tell us all about it. All right, so pretty much we're going to have, um, you know, the whole community out, all ages. We're going to have food, and it's, it's going to be a little bit healthy <laughs> food, but, you know, it's going to be some yummy food out there. And we're going to have all kind of activities, and um, some of them, you know, be ready because I do get competitive, you know. So, um, but, yeah, it's going to be a whole bunch of fun, and, you uh, you know, the event's going to be going to help us, you know, open up our other side of our facility to be able to help more people in the community. Awesome. I hear that you're also partnering with another nonprofit organization. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's an honor. It's an honor. Um, I want you guys to understand and know, bring your children out to Loganitis training. Let them come and experience everything that he has to offer there. He really cares about the children, but more than that, he cares about serving his community. And also, tell, tell them how they can find out more information. Where can they go? So they can go to our website at loganitistraining.com, or if they have any other questions, they can give us a call at 830-387-9898. And if you didn't catch that, don't worry about it. It's on the screen. And you can also go to our website at couchtimewithsonya.com, and we'll have all the information there about Logan's trainings. I mean, not trainings. You don't want to come work out with us in the morning, yes, do you? you? Do. Yes, you do. <laughs> Just <Go ahead>. kidding. <laughs> you want to know all about the event. It the information will be listed there for you. You know, it's really not something you want to miss. Logan is an amazing young man, and he has so much to share. So come out. You know, get to know him a little bit. We're going to take a quick break, but we will be right back. I'm Marlon Wilson, and you're watching Grind Time with Nightwolf Productions. If you got a plan, just do it. Don't let anything stop you. I'm Lauren Tolot, and you're watching Grind Time with Nightwolf Productions. Live poor, poor, poor for the first full year as an entrepreneur. Probably two. I am Chloe Cook, and you're watching Grind Time with Nightwolf Productions. There is no limit, um, as long as I'm willing to fail enough times. Hi, I'm Samir Freedy. And you're watching Grind Time with Nightwolf Productions. If you want to be the best, you got to be a little bit crazy. Start where you are, and start today. I am CJ, and you're watching Grind Time with Nightwolf Productions. Go find that passion and go for it. I'm Avi, and you're watching Grind Time with Nightwolf Productions. I always tell myself I'm going to win, like this is going to happen. It's stop settling for an illusion of success. Stop settling for an illusion of entrepreneurship. And keep grinding.
Welcome back. Man, was that an amazing story. I know it touched Delia and I. I hope it touched you. And just to know that he's changed hundreds of lives. And with his story, he's going to continue to change many more. Thank you, Logan, because your story matters. Well, today on the set, we have the lovely, lovely Shala Rogers, who is, who is the executive administrator with One Embrace Incorporated. Welcome, Shala. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies, for having me. I'm so glad you're here. I love that beautiful smile. So Thank you. Thanks for sharing it with us. Of course. Of course. Well, we're going to get into some questions. We want to hear a little bit more about you and what you do. Awesome. So first one. Our last three, week, three weeks have been really discussion on um, self-care. We talked about personal self-care and positive mm -hmm. affirmation. Today, it's, it's really about serving. Okay. So we heard your title mm -hmm. with One Embrace. Tell me what that role looks like. Well, currently, I serve as the executive administrator for One Embrace, and serving has always been something that have been a part of my life. Didn't quite know that's what it was. Um, but has always been a part of my life. And One Embrace have allowed me to do that through um, being the right hand of the executive administrator and also assisting with all, coordinating all of the programs and helping to manage those and how we get out in the community as well. Well, knowing you a little bit, uh, I would say you are one of the most organized people I've <laughs> ever met. <laughs> I would I say wouldn't that say too. that. <laughs> <laughs> I would. What a great okay. quality to have. Thank you. I agree with that <laughs> as well. <laughs> and you know, um, I like to ask, why did you get involved with One Embrace? What really, what tugged at your heart for you to get involved to serve with One Embrace? Um, it, it actually was a couple events that I attended and um, became quite um, well known with uh, the executive administrator. And it just kind of pulled me in because it was always community focused. Mm -hmm. It was geared towards helping women or providing some type of encouragement or just helping them build they, ex their esteem or who they are or trying to get them to fulfill the purpose in which they were created. And that within itself just caught my attention. And ever since then, I just jumped in <laughs> full force and have just been going ever since. You know, a lot of the things that you mentioned, they're what we've been hitting on in the last few topics. I yeah. You mentioned community and we talked yes. about how important that was and how we needed to really grow that sense of community yes. back to days past, yes. the way it yes. used to be. Yes. One of the other topics yeah. was legacy, mm. building on legacy and then the legacy you leave. This sense of serving, Yeah. is this something that you saw modeled in your home? Tell me about that. Well, oddly enough, I, I didn't. I saw it around me in some cases growing up, maybe if, if it was a teacher or um, in some cases it was some people I may have saw like in church or some, some areas of the community. But my parents really didn't go out and serve. Um, I saw different things that caught my attention. Uh, and it really didn't happen until I was older, you know, in, in adult, you know, maybe early 20s. And... I just saw things that needed to be done and I, it was just a way that it tugged at my heart. And even if it wasn't something major, it could be something as simple as something needed to be cleaned or something needed to be straightened or picked up or something needed to be typed up and address labels, whatever it was, I saw a need mm -hmm. and I just wanted to fix it. And so that kind of gave way to just serving. and. It, like I said, it could be something small or it could be something very big, but anywhere in the middle, if I just see something, I just feel like I have to do something. Oh, wow. You know, that reminds <laughs> me of that movie, and you and I mm -hmm. talked about this earlier, Shala. You weren't here, but the movie was one of the lines that just stuck out was, mm. see a need, fill a need. Yes. And that's yeah. what you are doing. You yes. are seeing yes. a need, and you're jumping and serving, and you're yeah. filling that need. Yeah. Yes. And I, I know that um, the team with One Embrace are, appreciate you and everything that you do. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do in the community? What does One Embrace really do in the community? Well, there's several different things. Um, one in particular that gives great uh, responses is um, primarily catering to the women. And we have several different retreats. One specifically is the BEAR retreat, and BEAR stands for Be Authentic, Real, and Exposed. And it just kind of gives us an opportunity to, to allow women 
as a whole to kind of peel away those layers that we kind of place on ourselves, mm -hmm. um, the expectations just of life and dif different things that we encounter, and allows us just to remove those layers and be real before our sisters and also be able to expose who we really are and why we were really created. And in doing that, um, it One Embrace within itself has so many other things that they do uh, in the community. Of course, they have different, we have different programs as well as far as with men, uh, we have Men of Hope, we have uh, sister circles, so we have just about in anything that caters around unity and caters around family in a way to help the community. So whether it's health fairs or participating with the um, rehab centers or just going out to just give a, lo lo a little love and embracing people in the community just to show them the love of Jesus Christ and to also just to show them that somebody loves them letting them know that they matter, no matter who they are or what walk of life that they're in. So you're touching just about every group in the community. You mentioned women, mm -hmm. you mentioned men. I, I believe you have one that is for teens, is that correct? Yes, we do have a teen sister circle, which is for uh, uh, young girls and teen girls. And then we also have a program called Father's Embrace, which is primarily for young boys. So we do have several programs. That's wonderful, how mm -hmm. exciting. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. I'm sure there are many people who might be watching right now that you wanna get involved. You hear her talking about being able to serve as we've been talking about this entire show. But if you want to get involved with One Embrace and Bear with the Women or any other program, you know, we want to, we want to know how can they get in touch with you, Shala? How can they connect with you, even to ask more questions? Mm -hmm. um, well, of course, you can go to the website. It is One Embrace, the number one, embrace.org, or you can contact me directly at Shala, S-H-A-L-L-A dot Rogers at oneembrace.com. Awesome. Now, I know you might not have been able to write that down don't worry it'll be on the screen and you can also go to couchtimewithsonia.com and you'll you won't miss it but there's also i've got a little birdie that told me you have your own business as well ah uh, yeah <laughs> so you serve in the community yes. you serve in a very vital role with a nonprofit organization but you also juggle many hats you also work for i know a um, health care system yes I and do. then you actually own your own business yes so i do tell me a little bit about that uh, my business is called shala's web and it's primarily a consulting uh, company that pretty much does the same thing that i do for one embrace i provide personal project management for different activities for different groups and we also provide different training and facilitating for different meetings for corporate or personal setting in the community as well. Man, does she juggle a lot of balls? I was going to say, how many hours <laughs> do you have in your day? It takes a I very organized person. <laughs> I was going to say, and this is why I said you are one of the most organized women I've ever met. I try. <laughs> well, it shows you're good at it. Thank you. Well, I'll definitely tell you, if you're looking for someone um, you need, you're serving in the community and you're looking for someone to help you pull it all together, you know what? Make sure you take the time to look up Shala at Shala's Web, and I know that she'll help you. But with this also, we want to kind of give you a little idea of what's coming up, right? Are you single or are you married? It doesn't matter. We are so excited. Our next segment is all about relationships, and we know that you want to be there. Make sure you follow us this week on our Facebook and our Instagram at Couch Time with Sonia, and we will see you next week.